In this video, we're going to continue with our example of using Python, Flask, WT Forms. It's our five guys example. And we have radio buttons and checkboxes. And now we're going to add to it a Boolean field and a hidden field. And also sort of in Jenja, get the length of a list. Okay. So uh, in addition to this uh, app, five guys Boolean hidden fields, Dot .py, that's going to be the, the flask. It's going to handle the routing. We're going to have the uh, forms uh, file, also Python. That's going to do the WTF. That's going to be where we sort of establish what's in our form. Then there's going to be this HTML file in the, in the templates folder. That's going to be the HTML uh, realization rendering of our form. We're going to have another HTML file, which is going to be the handler is going to respond to whatever information the user entered on the form. And both of those HTMLs use this shared layout and this style. I have some commands here that I uh, have already sort of entered and run. And I am I work in the PowerShell. There are also ways within Visual Studio to other ways to invoke this, but I usually use the PowerShell commands in the terminal. Here's our form, uh, radio buttons to choose. Uh, there's some uh, validation to make sure that they, in the radio button sets, that they make one of the choices. I'll choose a cheeseburger, medium well. I want uh, mustard, ketchup, and onions. That's all the old stuff. And now, and also, I yes, I want fries. And then here's the one of the new things is this single. So in for regular fries, I did it as a radio button with an explicit yes or no. But here I'm doing something, the sort of similar functionality but I'm saying, do you want Cajun fries? And I'm doing it as a checkbox. So it'll be yes, will be checked, and no, will be unchecked. And I also, in order to get the price of my Cajun fries over, I'm using a hidden field. So I'll say, yes, I want fries, and then I'm going to hit place the order. But before I do that, I want to view the page source. And here are the new things down here. There is, here's the Cajun fries. It's uh, just a checkbox. So uh, previously we did sort of a group of checkboxes Then we're acting as a team. This is sort of more of a single uh, thing and it is called a Boolean in WT forms. And then here is this Cajun info is of the type hidden. So that's why you don't, see it as a user, but it is there in the HTML. Okay. So that's, oh, and then uh, let me click submit. And I knows I ordered a cheeseburger, medium well, the toppings for ketchup, mustard, and onions. It This is one of the new things it knows that that's three toppings. And then I had uh, fries, so it added on the fries, and then I added Cajun fries, so it added on Okay, so this first file is the routes, and there are no no new routes. So this is sort of what's always been the secret key, the default route redirected to the form form handler route, and then the form form handler route bringing in from the forms file this fg underscore form, which is an extension of the Flask form, and if it's valid on submit. Then uh, we go to the handler. Otherwise, we go to the form itself. So what it's always been for the longest time now. OK, here is the forms. What we're bringing in new are the Boolean in the hidden fields. That's what's new to this video. We pl previously played with submit buttons and radio fields and select multiple fields, which then we used widgets to turn into checkboxes. So that's still all here. We have the validators to say that the input is required for the, those radio fields, but the Boolean in the hidden is the new stuff. This is stuff to get the checkboxes. Here's the radio field for the burger, the radio field for the level, 
Here are now the chat boxes for the toppings. Here is the radio field for the fries, the yes or no. Here's the Boolean, here's the new thing. So in the Boolean field, it's implied, as it says, the name Boolean, that it's just going to be a yes or a no. And then, uh, or sort of maybe an on off. And all there is pretty much is a label. And then in the hidden field, I'm going to do some data. So now I could have handled this, say, as a checkbox in which there was sort of my list of choices was one choice. But I decided to just to show these additional ways of doing it. So I'm going to do it as a Boolean field, so a pure sort of yes or no, but I also want to sort of pass some data. And I could just have the data over in my Jinja. I could pass the data from my like routing form. But my other prices were here in when I was establishing the form. And so I wanted to keep all my price information together. So that's one of the reasons why I sort of wanted the information here to sort of gather it all, put all the price, the, the names of the items and the prices of the items in one place. Okay. So again, here's the new part, the Boolean field with just, just a label and a hidden field with just some data. Then we want uh, the form. So many things, five guys, Boolean. That's the handler. Let's go to the form first. The standard here's for the burger, the level, the toppings, the fries. Okay, here's the new part. The um, one thing that I changed here from my usual, I usually put here's the label for burger, and I had the label first, and then and then the the rest of the stuff, cook level, the the label, and then the stuff, toppings, the label, and then the stuff. But I switched the order for the uh, fries. I mean, for the Cajun fries, for the Boolean field, because I wanted the check box, I wanted the check before the message. So, in so there is a switch from usually if above, it was always tended to be label fries label and fries, but here I'm doing fries Cajun then fries Cajun label, and then here is the uh, the hidden field. No label, of course, and the submit button. So just add in the new things into the form and now go over to the handler. So here's my handler. I'm working with the price of the burger. That is old. The cook level, that is old. I added something new to the toppings. Then I was just counting the toppings. Now I'm not charging for the toppings, so I don't necessarily need to count the toppings. But I just wanted to like make that uh, to sort of show how to do it in case it comes up. So I said, uh, result is all the information that's coming over with the form. The toppings were a list. So we work with a dot get list up above. What we had done before was we were looping over that. But this time I'm grabbing. I'm doing the results, get lists, the toppings list. There may be more than one list within results. And then vertical bar length. So that's getting for me how many toppings were chosen. I gave it a variable called top underscore num. And then I'm just sort of displaying that on the page. So I have now a four. And so that's four toppings. So that came from this length getting the length of the list in Jinja. Um, here's me splitting the regular fries and adding the fries to the burger. Um, now here's the Boolean field. So this is new stuff in Jinja. I have result fries underscore Cajun and it's a Boolean. So that's going to be a Boolean. So it's going to be, I don't have to ask if it's equal to this or that or anything like that. I can just say if there's a result. So if the result fries Cajun, that means that they said yes to the fries Cajun. 
And then, then I wanted the information. Well, the information didn't come with fries. Cajun because it was a Boolean and was the only information passed was yes or no. So I put my information that I wanted to pass in the hidden field, which was Cajun info. And I played my usual game here of I had the name of it and the price of it in what was in the value that was passed. So I'm splitting that and then I'm taking the price and casting it as a float so I can work with it as a number. And then, then I'm adding that to the total. So the total may be the burger. I may add in the fries cost. I may add in the Cajun fries. If I'm really hungry for fries, I may do both. Um, this is formatting the decimals, have two decimal places displayed. And I think that's all I wanted to show you. So the new things are the Boolean field, which was the single checkbox, the sort of lone actor checkbox, and the hidden field. And then again, one other thing I added, slipped in here on this one, was this length of a list in Jinja to, to show uh, how many toppings there were. Okay, that's it for this one. Thanks for your attention.